let's look at something. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I uh, appreciate the songs that we sang this morning about the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, uh, you know, it's a new day. Say with me, it's a new day. We're stepping out and moving into what God has for us. Hallelujah, amen. Remember this, encourage yourselves. It's a new day. Every day is a new day. I like to say around here, we're going somewhere. And I want to remind you, we are going somewhere. Uh, and so it is a new day. Yesterday's gone. Uh, it no longer, it, we no longer need it for today, although it was good or it might have been bad, whatever. It's gone. It'll never re replicate it again. We're going into a new day. Today is a new day. Amen. And so we're stepping into what God has. And so with that, God has given us the manifestations of his glory for this era. As every, uh, I've lived, I'm 62 years, 61 years old. I've seen a lot. I remember different moves of God come into this country, and I appreciate every move of God. The first move that I remember as a young boy was the move of the Holy Ghost that came to this country, hit the churches, a mighty move of God. I remember as a little boy, uh, ambulances bringing in the sick. I'll never forget that I sat front row. I remember people getting their sight. I remember people being healed. Oh, I just remember so much moves of God. I remember the firemen would come every once in a while. Because they said there was a fire on top of our building, and they'd come, this, and they said, I know we're here again. They're reporting a fire, but we know it's happening. It's just a demonstration of God. I remember those days as a little boy. I, I remember those revivals that we would stay late just to see. As a little boy, as a little boy sitting down, I remember those great moves of God. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't seen that move of God like that in a while. Now, there's still healing going on, but I'm talking about supernatural healings, like people coming in in, in wheelchairs and people bring the hospitals bringing in the dead that are, that are just about dying. And I, see, I saw that as a little boy. And also, I grew up in the word moment where uh, the Spirit of the Lord came and there was a word moment, movement where everybody was learning the word, learning the word, learning the word, learning the word, learning the word. And I remember sitting under the great John Osteen, Joel Osteen's father, for 13, 12, 13 years and, and went to Bible school there and it, I was hungry for the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And then came the move of faith, the, uh, the spirit of faith come and faith increased us. Uh, and so I thank God for that. But now there's a new move, there's a new move coming that it's already here. Revival is already here. You know that church, right? There's a great divide going on. The church is being revived. The church is being revived. People are, are being revived. And then there's a great awakening. There is a great awakening happening. It's happening all over our country. People are awakening unto God. They're starting to say, oh, we need God in this country. It's awakening. You see it. I've never seen this before in our country where they're literally going crazy in the White House. Things are happening all over. It's an awakening. It's an awakening. More people are praying for our country than ever before. Come on, church. I'm praying more. I'm really praying more for our country. And what that does is causes us to pray more for our beloved country. And that's an awakening. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there's a move that's taking place. And I pray that I want to be right in the middle of that move. I don't want to be a sugar church. I don't want to be a fluffy church. I want to be a church of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost a church that has the word and the spirit and a church that's full of faith but yet a church that's full of the power of god that's what i want hallelujah amen and that's my desire i, I want that and i want it in your life and, and so what i mean by fluff churches and and, and sugar churches is where, where there's there's no there's no move of the spirit that that causes us to be convicted how many people know that when you and i go to church the holy ghost should convict us and teach us and teach us how to live right not be motivated yes motivation is good but i don't know about you but motivation just doesn't last long it motivates me but i want something to teach me how to change my interior my heart how to fall in love with god stronger what i need to release in my life what i need to change in my walk with god hallelujah amen can you say amen and so that's why we're moving into this new realm. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. And again, bring your Bibles or if you have a, your iPads, iPhones, whatever. But uh, I, I love it when we get in the Word of God. We put our beautiful eyes on it. Say, I put my beautiful eyes on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your beautiful eyes on the Word of God so that you can become beautiful from the Word of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians, and I'm in second. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Notice what it says here. Well, I ain't go to 2 Corinthians. Well, no, no, I'm in 1 Corinthians. Excuse me. I'm all getting excited here. Your pastor's just excited for the word this morning. Notice what it says here. And I'm very careful because my Bible is almost 100 years old, so I don't want to rip it anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says here. Now, verses, verses um, 1 of chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts. That's what we're talking about, spiritual gifts. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So in other words, that's past tense. You were once uh, ungodly. You were uh, unsaved. Wherefore, I give unto you understanding that no man speaketh or speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed. In other words, you can't curse God when you love God and honor Him. And that no man can curse God or Jesus and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So we said that last Sunday, all together say Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, the devils can't say that. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God with worketh in all in all. But, I like when he says, but, in other words, get a hold of this, it's, it's letting us know, but there's more to come, but the manifestations of the Spirit, or the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, is given to every man, neuter gender, man or woman, to profit with all. In other words, this manifestation, which is the gifts of the, of the Spirit, is given to you by God so that you can profit, so that you can benefit. So that you can live victorious. Amen. Now, to, to another, uh, for by, verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Underline that and put number one. Word of wisdom, number one. To another, word of knowledge, number two, by the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit, number three. To another, gifts of healing, number four, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, uh, number five, point number five, or five, to another prophecy, uh, six, to another discerning of spirits, seven, to another diverse kinds of tongues, eight, and to another interpretation of tongues, nine. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Now, these gifts are called the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are manifestation spirits. Uh, they're, they're gifts that are, that, are, that are outward displayed. In other words, uh, when you have this gift or these gifts, they manifest itself. Come on, church. Uh, you can't hide the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can't hide it. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues, you can't hide these nine gifts. These nine gifts act in you. But notice this, they come to you for the purpose to so that you can profit, so that you can be benefited, so that you can increase, so that you can be blessed in this world. And also, it's to bless others. Now notice this. Uh, let's talk about this. The thing that we see here, uh, there is an increase. There's an increase. But notice what it says in verse, in verse 11. But all these, all these nine, worketh that one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally, as he will. Now the interpreter should have put a capital he will. He. Capital H. It's God. So as God will. So in other words, these nine gifts, God gives them to you. You have them. You have them now. You just don't know how to exercise them. You don't know. You haven't been educated on them and you haven't uh, exercised them. So they're dormant. But you have them because when you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you have the the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Remember we talked last Sunday, Holy Spirit came upon the believers. Now this is only for believers. This is not for unbelievers. The unbelievers don't have this. Unbelievers operate under intuition. Unbelievers operate under, I, I feel this. Or uh, uh, my, my, uh, there's another word that I'm looking for, intuition. Uh, uh, my, no, my uh, I guess uh, I'm feeling this. Uh, and so, but they really... Uh, realize that once they get saved, this enhances it. This, 
Once a person gets saved, the Holy Spirit now enhances these manifestations to operate for you and to benefit others. Can you say amen? But God gives them to you as He wills. In other words, there can be a moment that you need a certain gift that He will give it to you as He wills for that purpose. Come on, church, for that purpose. And we're going to talk about that. And then, of course, our fall college, our Bible college, we're going to talk about that in length. There's 12 uh, weeks of teaching about these nine gifts. But I want to talk about two this morning. The first two that you see, word of wisdom. Do you see that? Look at your Bible. The first one is the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Say it with me, amen. The word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Let me, let me just quickly give you a definition of what the word of wisdom is. Word of wisdom is you knowing the future and you knowing what God has in store. So in other words, when God gives you this gift, there's something about you that you'll know the future, or if he's going to allow you to use it uh, to bless somebody, then you can encourage somebody by this gift. So say with me, word of wisdom, it's future. All right. Now, word of knowledge, say with me, word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is something that you know about today and something that you knew about yesterday. Now, all of you know about your yesterdays, but other people don't know about your yesterdays. But God can use that gift to encourage you when someone comes to tell you, you know what, I was praying for you yesterday about the situation. And you would say, wow, I exactly went through that. How many people have experienced that? That's the word of wisdom. And you're wondering, how did that person know? Well, that person, it's not because of his beauty or, his, or their, their perfection. It's about the gift of the Holy Spirit as God will. See, God knew that person was going to talk to you, so God showed that person something that that person didn't even know what he was going to say to you. Amen? And I notice this. Let, let me just add to this. We're going to talk about these two. But with this two, there's something that God is releasing to you in this era that we're living in. Say with me, in this era in this generation that we're living in. We need this. Remember, the Holy Spirit came, but we need this. And it's the spirit of seeing and knowing. Seeing and knowing, seeing and knowing. In other words, God is going to use these two gifts in your life so that you can see and so that you can know. There's a knowing inside of you. There's a seeing inside of you. Now notice this. These gifts, God gives them to you for the benefit to profit, but the, the purpose of profit is for a benefit. For you to help somebody, it's a benefit. For you to help your life. There's times where I don't know how to do certain things. I'll pray in the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden by me praying in tongues, I just got the answer. I found out how to handle something. Now what was it? That was the spirit of knowing and the spirit of seeing. There's times where I will see something in my prayer where I'll be praying. Let's say I'm praying at church, I'm praying at home, and I close my eyes, and I'm just praying, and all of a sudden I'll just see something. And I say, wow, God, that's wonderful. The spirit of seeing. Now, this church, the Lord showed me this church in the spirit of knowing and seeing. Notice this, how did you see this church, Pastor? I was just praying something like five, four years ago. I was just praying. I was in Chicago, uh, minding my business, have, me and my wife celebrating our, our, our anniversary, and all of a sudden, I started seeing 11-11, 11-11, 11-11. And last Sunday, remember, or a couple Sundays ago, I said, look at your clock, it's 11-11, right? That's still happening to me, 11-11. What does that tell me when I see 11-11? I just thank the Lord. Well, the moment I see 11 I said, thank you, Father, you got something good. Because it was in the time that I saw 11-11 was that he showed me this church that we're to buy. I never knew this church. Didn't even know it was for sale. The pastor that was here didn't even, at that time, wasn't even thinking about selling it back then right? So it's the spirit of knowing, the spirit of seeing. So in this era that we're living, this era that we're entering in, God is going to equip us with the spirit of seeing and knowing. We're going to talk about why you need the spirit of seeing and knowing. Boy, do you and I need the, see, the spirit of seeing and knowing. Come on, church. Tell your neighbor, do, do I need it? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I, if we would only recognize the Holy Spirit is for us. There are songs that we sing, Holy Spirit, come. Well, the Holy Spirit already came. Come on, church. It would be, it's come already. Amen. There are some people that are still waiting for the Holy Spirit, saying, Holy Spirit, we need you. Well, it came in the day of Pentecost. Come on. It came to the church. Come on. And so we should be saying, thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming. Now, I need to equip myself to know you more. And that's what we're here to study about the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you will be fluent, if you will be 
have the spirit of, of knowing and seeing in this area, then you will operate in a great and mighty way. Nothing will get in your way. The devil can't try to outsmart you. The devil will try to lie to you because you'll have the spirit of seeing and knowing in this area. Come on, can you say amen? Hallelujah. So we need these gifts. I tell you, we need these gifts. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you may say, Pastor, these gifts are important. Yes. But the most important is with this gift, it makes Jesus look good on you. I want to give Jesus a praise. When you and I have the spirit of knowing and seeing, it makes Jesus look good on you. Because people now will say, well, how did you know that? You have no other way but to explain, none other but to explain, it's Jesus Christ. So you're giving him the glory. That's why the Holy Spirit came here on earth. The Holy Spirit did not come here on earth so that you can benefit per privately and personally. No, so that you can bless him while he's blessing you in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. People always ask me, how did you do it? I remember years ago, my neighbors would joke with me. My cousin would joke with me. People say, oh, you're just selling drugs, Pastor, because you're so prosperous. No, no, no. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you have that big house? Jesus. How do you drive a nice truck? Jesus. How do you have a nice motorcycle? Jesus. I can tell you over and over, it's Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say Jesus, hallelujah, amen. And I don't, I don't, I am not ashamed to say that when people tell me that. I, I took my motorcycle one day uh, to uh, 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 Walgreens. I took my wife on the back and I said, honey, now remember, you can't buy something you cannot carry. We're on a motorcycle. I think she needed a, a, a something, a nylons or something. I don't know, something she was going to put in her pants or something, you know. And, and so <laughs> I told her, when you go in the store, don't you buy anything. So I'm waiting outside and here comes a gentleman. He must have been a bicycle owner. He said, oh, man, that's a nice bicycle. Where'd you get it? I said, well, Jesus. He said, well, I know Jesus gave it, but where'd you get it? Jesus. <laughs> and he, he left knowing that Jesus gave him my motorcycle. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I give God the glory for that. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, it comes to so that you can magnify Jesus and bless somebody else. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need the spirit of seeing and knowing. I'm going to say it again. We need the spirit of seeing and knowing greater in this era that we live. Can you say amen? Go ahead and give the Lord a praise. I think I stretched my voice. Give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every now and then your pastor stretches his voice. And when he stretches his voice, I know when to back off. Amen. Hallelujah. Because then I'll be over. <laughs> amen. All righty. Now notice this. We need the Spirit of seeing and knowing let's look how it manifested through jesus go with me first of all to john amen those that are watching get your bibles don't look at me just get your bible look at it put your beautiful eyes on her hallelujah amen one day we're going to have scripture up here for you to see but that day will come soon amen but let's let's look at our bible amen beautiful bible of the word oh jesus hallelujah amen john the fifth chapter picking up we're seeing something. Now notice this. John the fifth chapter, verses 19. I want you to see this. Then Jesus said unto them, the disciples, say with me the disciples, and the Jews that were there. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son, which is him, the Son, can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Very clear, right? Jesus does not do anything unless he sees the Father do it. You may say, but pastor, but that's Jesus. He can do anything. No, no, not according to the Bible. He only does what the Father does. He only does what he hears the Father say. So if Jesus is well tried, and well used of God, why can't we only do what Jesus tells us to do? Now, how are you going to know what Jesus tells you to do? By the spirit of seeing and knowing. Come on. There are many things the Lord tells you to do, but because you and I don't understand that's him, we count it off. We eliminate it, and then we realize after the fact, later on we realize, man, I... I just felt that I should have did that. 
Well, your feeling was not your feeling. It was the gift of the Spirit of God working in you. You know what I'm talking about, right? You, 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 every day you operate this way. Every day. There's a knowing inside of you. There's a feeling. I want to call it feeling, but, but it's really not correct. Let me just eliminate the feeling word. It's not that. It's the impression of the Holy Spirit. He impresses you about something. He impresses you to drive a certain way. He impresses you to go to this store. He impresses you to go visit somebody. He impresses you to do something that, that you would have never done. And then you realize after the fact, wow, I'm glad I did that. Well, you still haven't educated yourself to know God was the one that did it for you. And by the time you start realizing it is God, then you start giving him the thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for getting me off this freeway. Thank you, Father, for uh, I, my, my, daughter, uh, my daughter one time called me. She was late to work, running late to work. And, and she said, Dad, I'm glad I was late to work because right at that corner, getting out of the neighborhood, there was a, a tea, car got T-boned there, you know, t bone Now, now I, I said, thank God that, that you felt to, to kind of, he impressed on you to be a little late in that sense. You see what I'm saying? You see how God does things? And sometimes we, we throw it like, well, you know, it's just, uh, you know, just, that's the way it is. No, when you're a born-again believer, this gift of the Holy Spirit increases in you. Uh, you become more sensitive to God. He's with you. He's in you. He's in your heart. You talk to Him. There's times when I get up in the morning just to talk to God, and I can hear Him talk back to me, which I never heard before because I never exercised the spirit of knowing and seeing. I say, good morning, Jesus. I love you. And I'll hear the Holy Spirit says, oh, I love you too. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, what a beautiful feeling. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one time uh, uh, we moved to the city and it was cold and I come from Texas and you don't really need thick coats, but here you needed a thick coat, right? And so I told my wife, I said, honey, it's cold out here. I better go buy me a, a jacket, but I don't want to go buy me an expensive jacket. She says, well, what kind of jacket do you want? I like to have me a nice leather jacket, one of those bomber jackets. You know what I'm saying? I still have it today. I, I use it when I ride my bike. And she said, well, let's believe God. And she got my hand and we prayed. And she said, okay, let's go get what God has for you. We, we go, we're, we're Sears. I don't know if they're still open now, but Sears, that's how long I've been. I don't know. Uh, anybody tell me Sears is still open? Is it still open in, in the malls? No? <laughs> okay, y'all know of it. I don't know the malls that much. Amen. So I got an escalator and I'm coming down the escalator in Sears. And there is one bomber leather jacket standing right there, right when I exit. And I said, honey, this is beautiful. She says, she, now my wife, very spiritual. She says, well, the Lord put it there for you. I said, hey, amen, let's put it on right now. It fit me perfect. I looked at the price tag. I said, ooh, <laughs> ooh, okay. I said, okay. She said, no, listen, but it's on sale. She said, it's on sale. I said, whoa, I like sales. Hallelujah, amen. So I go to the cash register, and they give me a sale. And then they give me another sale because I bought that one. And then they give me another sale because the zipper, the zipper kind of got locked up in it. And I know how to fix zippers, right? And it was, I told the lady, I says, you know the zipper? Well, we'll just have to talk to the batter. I ended up buying that jacket like if I would have got it at a Walmart. You see what I'm saying? Beautiful jacket, pure, genuine leather, hallelujah, amen. And what was that? What was it? It was the spirit of seeing and knowing that God had, had stirred my wife up, stirred me up, hallelujah, to go get what I have. Now, did I get benefit by that? Yes. Did I profit it by it? I got a brand new jacket by following the Holy Spirit. Now, notice this. That's just something in the natural. What about supernaturally? What can God do for you supernaturally when you follow the spirit of seeing and knowing? Can you say amen, hallelujah? So we see that. Now notice this. We find also that it comes to us all. Say with me, it comes to us all. Amen. But notice this. The way it comes, it's tied to and very connected by speaking in tongues. Acts 1. You don't need to turn there. Verses 6. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. So in other words, the power that you have is from the Holy Ghost. And then we find out in chapter 2, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. Come on, church. So in other words, speaking in tongues connects you to this power. So in other words, you've got to exercise yourself praying more in the Holy Spirit. Like I said earlier, sometimes uh, you, you, you may think it's strange, but pray in the Holy Ghost. 
You may not have the full vocabulary, but pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So uh, encourage yourself to pray more. I pray a lot in the Holy Ghost. I pray every day, all the time, all the time, all manners of time. People ask me, Pastor, how long do you have to pray? Just pray all the time, just all the time. And when you're driving, cutting grass, I mean, whatever you do. I thank you, Father. It's just a way of life now. Hallelujah. I go to the restaurant, and, I, and Christine and I are eating, and, and I just feel impressed. Oh, shabri bo Thank you. Is the Lord saying anything? No, I'm just worshiping the Lord. I just feel so good about it. Amen. I remember one time it's talking about a restaurant. The waiter, uh, we asked for some bread and uh, some bread, and I told honey, I said, honey, you know what? Uh, he's bringing us the bread. She says, well, we already have the bread of life. And I said, oh, shabri bo And he's standing there, and I'm praying shabri bo And he respected me. He just held the bread and just waited while I'm praying the Holy Ghost. I'm praying oh, shabri bo Thank you for the bread of life. Thank you for the bread of life. And he says. <coughs> I said, oh, oh, yeah, come on, sir. Just, oh, shut up. <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he thought? He said, man, what kind of language is that? Well, whatever it is, I'm praying the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost more. People just don't like to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's what it's for. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.